Welcome to my video on tankless water heaters. It is an Echo Smart 18, has two 9KW elements in it. Reasons for going tankless are fairly simple. In my case, I was looking for more floor space in the garage. A minimal chance of a water disaster was, of course, not a major thing with me since it was in the garage. Cleaner water, obviously they tell you with the tank water heater to never cook with the hot water. And the old tank that we took out here was about like a Morocco and rolled it across the yard with sediment and rust in the bottom of it. And energy savings. Energy savings on these, I've heard, can be as much as 30%. Exactly what this one is, I don't know. The only numbers that I can come up with as a comparison is the neighbor and I are both retired. We only have our wives in the house. My power bill in July was $326. His was over $700. The unit is easy to control to set the water temperature. In this case, you just turn the dial. As you'll see, I've got it set for 100, and again, I'm in August right now. If I want to run it to 110 degrees, I just crank the dial up to 110. Again, we probably in the middle of the winter would crank it up to around 114, 115 degrees to have a good warm shower. In the summer, I rotate it back to around 100. Basically, it's set right now to take a shower, and one of the requirements if you're going, going tankless, especially electric tankless, is you want to have auxiliary heaters in your dishwasher and auxiliary heaters in your washing machine for sanitization. Without those auxiliary heaters, you probably would not want to turn the water down as low as I've got it, but I have auxiliary heaters in both of them, which makes it very practical to run it at the lower temperatures, and I just take hot water showers and leave the cold water off. This is my second tankless water heater. We'll get into the phase of the first one a little later in the video. I have uh, really liked its performance. It's done very well by me as far as this one. This one's only about a year old. Uh, it's very, very precise with the water. If you set the dial for 100 degree water, you get 100 degree water. Sizing a tankless water heater depends a whole lot on where you live and obviously, of course, how many people are in the home. In this case, it's just the two of us in the home. Uh, I'm in coastal South Carolina. Groundwater temperature now is at 74 degrees. In the middle of the winter, it's 55 to 60 degrees. Obviously, if you're in Michigan, you're going to need a much, much larger unit. Once you get north of the North Carolina-Virginia border, the electrical requirements would be pretty stiff for a home with more than two people in it. Again, I'm having 80 amp breaker on mine, 200 amp service on the house. You're probably looking at a 120 amp breaker once you get up in that area. Once you get further north than that, an electrical system becomes impractical and a gas system becomes the only way to go if you want to go tankless. Using this Echo Smart 180, two people can take a shower at the same time without any trouble in the middle of the summer months. In the winter, probably would be tight to two people taking a shower. On an initial cold startup, just initially trying to get hot water, it probably takes about 20 or 30 seconds longer to have hot water at the tap than it would with a conventional water heater. The advantage, of course, with this unit is as long as it's running, you have hot water, and usually hot water at a very consistent temperature. If you turn the water off and then turn the water back on, you can expect to have a cold spot in the water, especially during the winter months. That might last for 10 or 15 seconds before the water warms back up. This unit requires an 80 amp breaker, which is broken down in the box at the lower left into two 40 amp circuits. Running the number four wire is a major expense and time consumer for the installation. The piping changes were not that difficult. The only major change that you need to do as far as the piping is to make sure that when you connect up the unit, you use compression fittings. In this case, the Echo Smart came with NPT fittings. Under no circumstances should you ever solder to a tankless water heater or destroy the sensors in the unit if you do. That required the use of compression fittings at the bottom of the unit to connect up the unit after the piping modifications were complete. The reason for going with the EchoSmart is it was almost identical to its predecessor, which was a SETS. The original water heater was probably a 40-gallon water heater. It came with a conventional tank water heater when the house was built. The wiring on the original water heater was 10-gauge. This is the interior of this unit. When I show you the original unit, you'll note that uh, they are very similar in design. 
actually that was a major decision in picking this unit was the piping was almost identical and there was only a minor change in electrical to hook the unit up. The two elements go in vertically from the top. They're very conventional. They're easily sourced and replaced. Price-wise, uh, this unit was purchased new in uh, March of 2014 for $380. I checked online at uh, both Lowe's and Home Depot, a 40 gallon dual 450 watt unit is 329 best price, a 50 gallon is 499 best price. As you can see, uh, the cost factor has just about been eliminated with the new design of these new units. They come way down in cost. The original set unit was $738. This is my original SETS unit. SETS is out of business right now, but when I open this one up, you'll see it's very, very similar to the Echo Smart. It certainly looks like that when SETS went out of business that the Echo Smart bought what was left of the company. The major difference between the SETS unit and the Echo Smart is the control system. Interestingly enough, the SETS unit seemed to have one or two sittings if you weren't careful. It was either scald or off. With the Echo Smart, where you set the temperature at is exactly what you get. In the case of this unit, I finally wound up after several years going in and replacing one of the 9KW elements with a 4.5KW element. After that, I found out I had much better control on the water temperature and the unit was okay for that time forward. The unit was bought new in January of 2005, that's the sets here. The unit suffered a triac failure in this November of 2009, and I repaired that. I just ordered a part from DigiKey, in this case it was a $5 part, and I already had the overload that you see on the left. The brand new unit was installed on March of 2014, and I have had no trouble with the brand new Echo Smart unit since then. You could probably ask, since I got only about four years out of the SETS unit, why I would consider going with an Echo Smart. Again, I repaired the unit and got, went from 2005 to 2014 with it. But the repair was actually done in 2009. For most people, that of course will admit a brand new unit. Since I was all the way in at time of replacement, the electrical was completely installed. The piping was completely installed and the two units were virtually identical. It made sense just to swap the unit out. Why would I not go back to a regular tank water heater after only getting five years out of this unit trouble free? The concepts that kept me in this direction primarily were keeping some floor space and energy savings and cleaner water. Not that I wanted to cook with the water, but the idea of taking shower with a water heater full of rust tended to uh, make me a little bit uncomfortable. This is to show what the water does to the heating elements. In the case of these two, they're both 10KW. The first one I removed in 2009 on the bottom. The top one was a life unit replaced in 2014. As you can see, the deposits on even the long-term element are not that bad. With the minimal cleaning, this element is ready to go back in service and it's still as good. I can still use it in the other unit. Both elements are ready to be reinstalled if I need them. As I've indicated, the uh, ex comparative expense for tankless versus tank water heaters is going to be in the upgrade of the installation. The decision on whether or not to spend the money would have to be weighed on the benefits. Again, more floor space a minimal chance of a water disaster, especially if it's inside the home, cleaner water, and some energy savings. Those will be your deciding points on whether or not you decide if you want to get rid of your tank water heater and go with a tankless water heater. Hope this helps. Check back often. Give me a like if you like this, and I'll see you on a future video. Take care.